Yes. Holy cow. This was this was a painful process for some mm-hmm. reason. We kept trying. It, I'm like, it's the same meeting that I sent you. I was in and you were in and they weren't connected for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. It's probably me. Yeah. Let's see here. Deal. It, it was your fault. You know what? Then. Yeah, it come on, man. Yeah. You know, <laughs> trying to run a legit operation here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's what we do on the cast was uh we just blame the guest that's any right. technical good difficulties oh, perfect. you know what perfect. yeah, yeah. Can't i mean it, sh- it, it can't be us we do this too much to make <laughs> yeah. mistakes well you know what we still have never figured out how to hook these stupid cables up oh man we, we were just talking about it on the ride here it's like we really need to idiot proof these cables like maybe get a little diff- tape a different color duct tape and putting it to connect I, every time i'm like ah Wrong, <laughs> wrong hole. You do story it. of my life, you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you and it just it's a mess. So yeah, I, I had to correct you at least on three of the connections on there for sure. It, he gets mad at me because he's always like, "You set it up." I'm like, "All right," and I'm just I I promise you. If here's you know, the thing, here's here, me coming clean. I just there. start plugging stuff in. I figure, you know what, it'll work out in the end. And here we are. It works. Mm-hmm. Never works. Uh, here um, we are. I'm getting blamed. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, Casey, um, thanks for joining us. Um, we're actually Jared's recovering right now. From what, we just got done with what a three mile run. It was a nice little yog. We yeah. had a little time. We're like, I'm like, hey man, it's the first sixty degree day in Michigan. Almost seventy. We I need to got up to awesome sixty seven. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so we ran, and I feel like you're, I'm sure your lactic acid is be- building up after I ran you into the ground like that. Oh, I need a stiff beer to wash it all away. <laughs> yeah. I don't have yeah. anything, though. <laughs> well, Casey, um, like I said, appreciate you coming on. Um, let's just jump right into it. You want to tell everybody who you are, what you do? Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm Casey Vandegraaff. Uh, I work for Prime Archery, so um, do a little bit of marketing there, do a little bit of graphic design, do a little bit of photo video. So, um, there's, there's two people in our marketing department there. So me and one other guy, and we handle everything from G5 prime quest. Um, and then we recently started a company called grace optics. So a little red dot site. So do a little bit of everything and yeah, it keeps yeah, that's busy, awesome. Especially, especially with a year like this, it is a busy industry. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I can believe it. You know, that that's funny. We talk about it a lot. We felt like we saw a lot more <clears throat> people hunting, uh, in archery season, like than we've ever mm-hmm. seen before this year. Do you get, you see a lot of like uptick in sales and stuff like that? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. We've had, I mean, G5 has been around for, uh, I think 25 years now and yep. it's, we've had our best year that we've ever had. Um, so that plus, I mean, we've had some of our best months. We've had million dollar months, which we, we haven't done in, in quite a few years. So, um, people are out there in the woods and they are flinging some arrows. So we <laughs> love to good. see it. Ja- Jared actually, and we didn't, this is not planned, mm. but Jared, you recently, were you about what the, the Nexus four? Yeah. Nexus so 4? I actually haven't told anybody yet, but, uh, last month I did a, a bovine basics video mm-hmm. and I told everyone at the end, I was going to shoot all the different companies and, and most of the flagship top models that this archery shop had there. And I'm now announcing it that I. But this will come out by the time you've announced. Yeah. Right. So yeah, uh, you know, I'll just spill the beans on. It will, and people <laughs> will deal with it. Um. Yeah. I I got the Nexus Four. The thing is freaking nice. awesome, man. Yeah. What, what is it? Green? Uh, it's the Grizzly Brown. Brown. Grizzly what brown made you nice. go brown over green? Just what they had. I'm not. Yeah. A, I like. I like different colors, but I liked the brown. It's a sick little color. Yeah. No, yeah, that's a good look. That's been our number one seller for sure. That's probably the best bow, in my opinion, that we've ever made. So what? What are the? What is that? What's the? Uh, that's I would assume that's what like the thirty-two inch or something like that. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. So I love 34. that. 34. Thirty-four. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we have like we have our grip is in the center of the bow, uh, so it's a center gripped riser. Um, so that thirty-four inch, it is a longer bow, but it feels it feels like a normal bow. It doesn't feel very big in your hand, so. Um, yeah see i was always a fan of the that was my range with compound bows like the 34 or 35 inch mm-hmm. i just yeah. feel like it, it's not that long it's the most stable if i could get like a six and a half inch brace height or higher like in that that length i'm just i'm gonna shoot it well like it's stable yeah. it's not it's heavy enough where it it's kind of sits well I'm, yep and uh yeah i like that though so that's that's pretty sweet so how you been shooting with it um god it's been cold out 
but <laughs> yeah. it has been cold out <laughs> except for today. I've too been busy I've running with me. Too busy running, but no, I have been. I've been shooting a little bit. I haven't sighted in my uh, my sight yet, just because it's a new bow. I can't really dial well, it. Well, you were talking about switching to a single pin, and before we, are you going to do that? I might. I'm mulling it over. Mulling it over. What about no over. sight? Just, just instinctive. Fitzgerald style. Yeah, Fitzgerald style. <laughs> Team <laughs> Fitzgerald. If you guys don't know, we used to watch these guys' videos back in the day, and they just instinctive shoot compound bows they mainly shoot with finger i think they finger shoot them with right fingers we'll, tr- we'll have to have them on they've been, been talking to them years and it's so dan and guy dan and guy they're yeah we guys. yeah we experience that a lot more than you think so we make like a really long axle to axle so it's like a 39 yep and you you'd be floored by how many people are shooting fingers with that bow really like, i don't there's still a lot of them out there yeah no sight no nothing they're shooting good for them a trad bow yeah it's it's nuts. I mean, How, they definitely keep say, the arrow companies in business, which is nice. Right. You're, <laughs> <laughs> you, say you've, you say you've been seeing it for a long time. How long have you been with Prime? Um, I've been here for five years. Okay. So, yeah. So, I guess not a, not a, a real long time. But, yes, yeah, so we um, we go to these events called Total Archer Challenges where we work yeah, in yeah. the summer. And, and, yeah, people are just sending arrows. So, we talk to a lot of people. A lot of people are shooting our bows, and they'll walk into our booth and, tell us the whole setup especially those guys that are shooting fingers those guys love to tell us what they're doing and <laughs> holy cow because yeah. they feel like they have to prove the world wrong and i've got I'm nothing wrong with i guy. shoot fingers but no. i'm shooting with a traditional bow so yeah. uh it's not the same like i feel like with the compound bow with the fingers is just yeah that's how i started though when i was I a kid i was not allowed to have sights or uh a release my dad's like if you you know what i got you the bow you're just gonna f- like shoot with this for a while because i feel like he didn't know if i was gonna <laughs> Like stick with it. Twenty two years later. See, I thought I was a big deal. Now. I was. I thought I was a big deal when I finally got like a plastic D loop. Oh my, yeah, <laughs> I remember that. My bow string. <laughs> like, this, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Latch that. Uh, what was it? A True Fire Patriot. Oh yeah, the True mm-hmm. Fire. Those things are it's dirty. Like Fifteen bucks at a Walmart or something. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah. I'm. This is it. I'm gonna kill so many deer yeah. now. <laughs> and you just set like it in there. Like when you arrows. got those Nikes with like the little shocks on, and you're like, I can jump high now. Oh, like, shocks! <laughs> Here's the thing: you could jump high. Hey, yeah. don't kid yourself. <laughs> those, I, you think I gotta get me a pair of Nike shocks. Those were the coolest. Jared wore them all the time. I never had a pair. <laughs> I had the Velcro. We shoes. did. We brought. We went to high school together, and we we started a trend. The MTA that swept our high school. MTA Pros. MTA they Pro, they're bright white Velcro shoes, big like bl- bricks of shoes. Mm-hmm. Man, you know what? Those shoes were se- sweet. They were like fifteen bucks. Hey, I there was like there was a section on either side of the foot, right? Oh, yeah. Usually, like where the Nike swoosh is, but it was just where all the seams came together, and it made like this little diamond. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I cut out some camouflage duct tape <laughs> you did. In, in that shape and stuck it in there. Yeah, came to school and was like, just on the next level. And you're from <laughs> Michigan, like I mean that plays yeah. well here, you know. It, oh it, yeah, you're <laughs> wh- which, which part? Here. Which part of Michigan? You're on the east side, right? Yeah, I'm on the east side. So yeah, our company's lo- located in Memphis, Michigan, which is kind of near Romeo or Meta area, and then I actually live in Lake Orion, Michigan. So. Okay. Oh yeah, quite a ways to work. Yep. It's Orion. How do you pronounce? It? I thought it was always Orion. No, it's Lake oh. Orion. Orion. Oh, I've been saying it wrong no. for a long time. Mate, I don't think I can read very well. <laughs> you you no, didn't want to tell me. There's no. There's a lot of people that say Orion, so you're <sighs> Orion. You're one right. many. That's no, good. Potato, to, potato. That's good. No, it's not too far from us. We're right. We're right in the Grand Rapids area. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, I, I actually went to school in Grand Rapids, so Grand Valley. So I was. Oh, there you for, did. My yeah, wife went there for five yep. years. Yeah, on that side of the state. That's nah, not bad. Hey, well, Grand Valley's okay. There. Hey, there's a lot of big deer there. A lot of big. Yeah, deer. you know that's what we say about the. East no, side. but here's the thing though. He's not wrong. <laughs> Out by Grand Valley. Oh, there Allendale. Are, Allendale yeah. area. There's some good mm-hmm. deer. That's uh, what's his face from Long Range. I feel like hunts out there. Yeah, One of those Dylan. guys. Dylan, Dylan, yeah. Yeah, Dylan, he kills <coughs> giants out there. He kills good. He <laughs> shot like yeah. six bucks this year. I know. He sh- and it's like all public land, too. You know, know what? I see it, and I'm like, he goes, he catches huge salmon, and like. Dylan, Dylan or Dawson? No, Dylan, the guy that always works on our. I know like who the, Dylan is. One of the best guys to know. Nicest guy yeah. you've ever met. He is, yeah. 
Oh yeah, he's yeah. and yeah, he's a good hunt. They so he works obviously in the archery shop and he'll work the morning shift and he'll get out at twelve and every single day he goes hunting. So yeah, it's a little different he's now. A... Now he's got a girlfriend. So I, that Ooh, take a... <laughs> hey. I was gonna say he when you're a single young buck, yeah. you have expendable income and nothing hey. but time. Could you imagine if we oh, were in that could position you imagine? right now? Probably well, think of the two hundred inch bucks we would be shooting on a regular yeah. basis. Oh yeah, you guaranteed. Know. I don't know. Yeah. They're well. So you've uh, you've been at prime, <laughs> you you've been at G five for what five years? Um, yeah. You work on bows. You work with you guys do a lot of broadheads. I mean, I've shot I don't know how many Montec broadheads in yeah. my life for like the <laughs> longest time. Just solid one piece sharp. Um, yeah. You do Quest. What what keeps you the busiest? What's like the uh, what's like um, the thing you do most? It so it depends on the time of year so bow luckily bows and broadheads are totally different seasons so the yeah. buying season for bows is kind of like right now um we're actually kind of getting towards the tail end of it but um that initial launch season is so busy for bows especially for us on the marketing side creating all the materials and taking photos and, and making video stuff um but we kind of have like a little bit of a lull right now where we have about a month and a half where we kind of play catch up on a lot of stuff and then we'll start to hit uh, broadheads as soon as we start to get a little bit closer to season so that's when people are buying broadheads they're two two months sometimes a few days before season yeah i was gonna say so, oh, it's the oh crap run yeah. it's like oh yeah. yeah i don't have any broadheads no so you, is, is that before like turkey season or like spring bear for a lot of guys is that when that starts up yeah yes yeah, so we make a little bit of a push um here i mean we're we're starting to push right now um we'll start to put start to push a lot of marketing dollars towards that turkey season um, especially yeah. with our new broadhead, the Mega Meat, which is just kind of a bigger. That's what you shoot, right? That's what I'm going to shoot. That was my yeah. nickname in high school. It's the weirdest thing, <laughs> yeah. Mega Meat. Oh, yeah. Man, that... <laughs> yeah, we've had quite well, in the office with that name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me what the Mega Meat. What's that? Tell me about so the that. Mega Meat is so we had a dead meat, which was um, an inch and a half, um, three blade expandable. So pretty much we took that. We pretty much took a, a few different broadheads and mixed them together. So we have a two inch. Uh, three blade mechanical and they're lutes blades so they're super super sharp blades um so kind of our theory behind that is beforehand like rage is a two inch cut and they they're yep. that's what they're known for and a lot of people are yep. switching out of rage um just because of penetration issues so when we come out with a two inch broadhead with three blades it doesn't it's there's a lot of marketing that, that's going to happen so we have yeah um, yep we, so pretty much it's that blade angle that changes on our broadhead the most. So uh, the Rages is kind of a, it's, it's a steeper angle like that. And then ours is going to be a lot, a lot more like that. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to slice a lot more rather than, than chop. So you're going to get a lot get more cut up. Yeah. Even though there is three blades and it's still two inches. So it, it took us a while to, to make a broadhead that big. We always kind of try to stay away from that. But once we realized the issues with a lot of these two inch um, broadheads, we were able to kind of, narrow it down to this this style and this body and and it's been awesome so far so you're, you're gonna shoot that that what was it called uh meat mega, mega meat mega meat actually <laughs> i shot the turkey last year with the montec yeah which what which one the montec oh sorry the montec yeah, yeah right right, right. <laughs> i'm like what are you talking <laughs> I don't about? know i clearly uh, I don't the know. 125 grain yeah um uh but yeah this year i just want just i just want a bigger cutting Mecha surface. you're going yeah. mechanical i'm gonna though, go you're... mechanical yeah you, yeah. man no, a lot of people it, trend one way but you're you're going right back yeah. okay I've, I've heard good things about it yeah no yeah that's i mean they're both really good heads. so that mega meat um so i run all of our social media too so i get all the content from people that that are having success out there and i t i i haven't been able to share a lot of this stuff because it is just so gory really <laughs> like it crosses that line where i'm like i can't put this on there like, <laughs> <laughs> that's too much man there, yes. that's too much yeah it's an instant it's like, one of those uh graphic image things you know <laughs> yeah. that they throw up in do, yeah. do you really want to see this picture <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the thing is that makes me want to see it more whenever yeah. i see that i do yes. too yes especially yeah it's our so like we have our prime account where we try to keep it like very cinematic and very professional high yeah. looking and they have our G5 account where we're like, let's just show everything. Let's show. All <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, if you don't have a like some, you don't like have an outlet for that. It's destructive. Like you need an outlet for the the gore, like the real side of, you know, if you yeah. try to keep it too, you keep that in too much. It's just, not good. Just know that if you ever feel like, oh, I can't post this, send it to us. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll definitely look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I want to see I it. A see lot of crap. people, yeah, especially like as soon as the snow started to hit, like you just have snow that's just like red sprayed. And just, yeah, but yeah. no, it's 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 been really good for that broadhead. So yeah. yeah, I'm excited to use it, man. So the you guys make Montec is you know Montec I'm, is the uh, the um, the fixed blade. Do you have other fixed blades you guys make? The M3. Um, oh yeah, wow. Yeah, so now we make the M3. So it's it's the Montec M3. So it's a newer version of the Montec. So we've had yeah. that Montec for I want to say 20 years, just about. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. And and it took us quite a while to make any change to that because that is still currently the number one selling fixed blade broadhead on the market. So wow. for us to make a change, we needed a, a good reason to. So um, we made it quite a bit sharper. Uh, it's a stronger metal, so that allowed us to um, to get those blades a little bit sharper. And then um, we closed those vents on the side, so it's a little bit quieter. And um, it's just it's just overall awesome broadhead. I've seen so in our engineering, we do a lot of different stuff to test those broadheads. We bend them, we drop them through a guillotine, we do all this crazy stuff. Um, and I've seen that broadhead do things that I've never seen broadhead do. So Interesting. If, if I were to put it through a shoulder, there's no doubt about it. That is the broadhead to do it with. So what about a, open. what about like a 50 pound recurve? How would that fly out of that bad boy? Awesome. That's, that's kind of what it's going to be made for. So we're, so when is this okay. podcast going to come out? Uh, is it, I mean, it can come out whenever you, if, if you have something <laughs> yeah, you want to share, we can, so in, I guess it's not really a surprise, but we're, we'll be launching our 125 grain Montec M3 here in about a month. Thank you. That's what I was just going to ask. That was my next so, question. Yes. So we just got our first, uh, we cut our first one the other day and it is, it's awesome. So it's going to be the same cutting diameter. Uh, but what we did is we just extended that tip. So mm -hmm. that's where we added the 25 grains. So it's going to be even more penetration, but um, that's going to be your, your, a uh, recurve broadhead of choice. For Love sure. it. I'm, I, I've been look. I've been actually looking to figure out. I don't. I didn't have a plan for this year. I've tried a few, never stuck with anything yet. So mm -hmm. and I can honestly say the one reason I chose to go a different route of broadhead this mm -hmm. year was because of the weight. Because of the weight in the M3s. I really wanted to try those out. Because were they new last year? Yeah. Yeah. Last okay. year. Yeah. So I I wanted to try the 125s and I was like freaking pulling the rest of my hair out trying to find where where are the rest of the 125s yeah. at and it's like well, yeah. don't offer it in 125 yeah, so. yeah. it's good news I, yeah, I just, no, as a consumer we appreciate it well especially because the <laughs> thing is always right now like high foc high yeah. weight you know well, that's, why, that, that's why it ended up taking so long because we were we were like do we come out with a collar and put it on the 100 grain or do we make a and then to get it up to 125 and then come out with a 150 or a 175 grain and kind of like because we didn't know how high all these people were going with their all that foc trend and stuff like that so yeah. um we figured 125 is going to be the safe but that's what most people are shooting um and then maybe eventually we'll throw a collar in there that's that'll yeah. that'll bump it up to 150 or 175 so make it modular people want to how do those that. collars yeah. work you just throw it like it's just a piece of like a ring you put in the back and or used one of those before yeah there's some yeah there's some like that that our old strikers had they had like a silver collar which was a little bit lighter and then we had a heavier brass collar um, yeah so yeah just little stuff like that you can do that is exciting i like i said so my progression of broadheads went when i was really young i used a ton of muzzies Mm -hmm. I feel like everybody had everybody muzzies did, and yeah. you know, yeah. like you could get them so cheap and I had either orange or green ones, you know? <laughs> uh, then I, I shot Montec forever, uh, up until I really switched to, I think I shot Schwacker for a year or two. Mm -hmm. I, I t shot a deer with the Schwacker that, like you said, like he dropped in sight. I mean, the mm -hmm. me mechanicals can be like devastating. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny. Cause like a lot of those broadheads, they really were amazing. So we we actually tested some old broadheads um, yeah. before a lot of these companies got bought out by the conglomerates and started making right. them overseas. That's where everything went very poorly. <laughs> yep. Just everything was made overseas. Um, just quality just went downhill real quick. So we have some older stuff that we've tested, and those are still awesome. Like that Muzzy is an awesome broadhead. Yeah, um, it is. It's sharp, they, tough. Yeah, as soon as they brought it overseas, it just – I don't know, man. I don't know what goes on over there, but – it's <laughs> the level of, like the they're, they're filling metal with sand and it's just like, <laughs> yeah. I, don't think that, I don't think that's <laughs> no but it's true like those muzzies are you know i know montex are you know i'm sure still that way you could like 
you know, you shoot that thing in the dirt, it's still pretty freaking sharp. And you, <laughs> you know, know what? I'm Trust me, the years that I was using mu- <laughs> muzzies, I was shooting some arrows in the dirt. That was like ages 12 to like you, no one 17. Had, I'm using muzzies and shooting them in. You know, you're missing arrows. You're, you shoot, you days, grab man, it, you throw it right back in your the quiver. Budget, the budget broadhead, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. It is. Yeah, we've had people shoot like nine, ten deer with the same broadhead. It's just love awesome. it. Yeah. No. You sharpen? Do you ever sharpen your broadheads? Have you ever? Uh, no. No, I've never done I that. I probably should, but I mine lasts me the year, and I end up just getting new ones every the year. The ones that I've had have blades that you just replace. Yeah. Like you just slide mm-hmm. them in, kind of like with the, the you know the muzzy, you just slide in or whatever. But yeah. Um. Man, if I had some Montex, I know there's like. You can, there's like stones you can definitely. You guys, reach. do you guys you have guys those? Actually, have those. Yep, yep. We yeah, got okay. sharpening stones for them, so. Yeah. Keep, yeah. If my, keep it sharp all I'm, the time. I'm gonna tell you this though, mine probably won't last. <laughs> like, <laughs> by the end of the by the next year, it's just time to get new ones. That's yeah. I've grown to accept that as a fact. Sometimes I'll have leftovers for turkey season, but after turkey season, those things are gone. That's all right. Mm-hmm. You know what and, my motto is. You know what? New is full good. S- go s- full send. Send Full it. send and new things are good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know. I got – so every year I put a little sticker on my bow somewhere. And yeah. It's a different quote every year. And this year it's, it's just ju- – it's just send it. Just it's send it. Just right <laughs> send it, man. Because like, I always look at it and I'm just like, God, do I do it? And it's just like, just send it. <laughs> Dude, you know what? I need that on my bow. <laughs> yeah. the, this is the – You don't need any more stickers the, on your bow. This is the issue that I've had the last – two three years i pass up tons of deer all year mm-hmm. it gets to the rut i have a shot or something you know i something doesn't work out with the buck i spend the rest of the year regretting not prior to the rut shooting at least one doe mm-hmm. i've yeah. i've passed like midi medium-sized bucks and does and i always regret it and yep. i need to, something on my bow that just says just send it because my texts aren't enough I, I, you always do it whenever you text me don't do it i feel like that just for, strengthens my resolve i always tell you to shoot a doe first you do and i never this year i'm gonna listen you know what i'm gonna even let be it more, be known my sticker is gonna be more blunt let than his mine's just gonna be shoot a doe i'm just gonna put that right <laughs> on, just so there's no <laughs> that, wondering you know in the what? moment that sounds like a sticker opportunity shoot a doe yeah. shoot a doe that's right yep get it out of the way fill that freezer up <laughs> You know, yeah, well, they, be they a that provider there for you guys that doe season, right? Yeah. Hey, you just got to go there and, and put one on the ground. Give you a well, nice last year I did. Well, I shot one last year. Uh, so I'm, I was, took my daughter out. It was, it was, she's eight mm-hmm. and one kind of comes like, it was early in the morning. We're on the, in a ground blind that I had made in my woods. Um, we're just kind of like, she's sitting there. I get her all bundled up. It was actually pretty cold. Uh, and like I'm like she's like on the ground, so I went and sit on the ground. We're like talking and stuff real quiet. I'm like I'm gonna look up to see if there's any deer, you know. Mm-hmm. So I peek up my head, and lo and behold, like eight yards away, there's like three or four deer. So I'm like I get back down. I'm like D, I'm gonna shoot one. <laughs> so I pop up, and it was close. And I actually just I mean I hit it hardly high. Like if you you saw, I saw a picture of it later on a trail camera, and you would think it would be a dead deer, but mm-hmm. somehow either it, like one lung it and it they got better i don't know yeah but so i lost it that was my i tried to shoot a deer doe early this year i just blew it i you just hate blew to it. See it man you hate to see you really it really do so yeah, yeah you, you guys yeah. have the early season right yeah yep yeah we try to get out every year and just get a nice warm-up one in but fill the freezer and then hold out yeah now with with the new uh i guess jumping back to the to the, yeah. the bows you guys just came out with uh especially these nexus bows um how much of that new design were you involved with specifically? Like, is that um, something you've gotten your hands on and helping with like you take that, feedback or? from that you're yeah. hearing on social media or yeah, how's it work? for sure. We try to, yeah, we try to get as much feedback as we can, mostly from dealer, the dealer side of things. Those are our guys that are working on our bows and other competitors. So they kind of know what's going to be easiest. Um, mm-hmm. But the stuff that I've kind of done on the bow is all like, I designed all the decals, the logo, the name, the badging on the side of it, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then a, a few things here and there, but that's pretty much my involvement in the bow. And then okay. you I mean, named they, it. They have, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I like that. So you get to name, yeah. that's a big, 
Yeah, I want to dive into. That's this like a naming little. a child. You know, your your company's product for the whole year rides on year. the name that you could give it a terrible name or one that's like a, a foreign well, word for some swear. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know. Yeah, well, well, it is because like uh, last year I named the Black Series. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that was kind of like supposed to be like the black, like as like in the pinnacle, like the Lexus, the black. Yeah, word. the black label, and then yeah. all like the black, the black rights movement kind of came and then full thing. <laughs> and we were just like, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> like, came out, everything's already printed, everything's done, and we're just like, oh, this could go so poorly. <laughs> <laughs> you really, you just never thing. know anymore. Like, yeah, you, you never know. So, first yeah. off, I w- I'm gonna recircle this a second. First, mm-hmm. how did you come up with the name Nexus? And then number two, mm-hmm. what other names did you come up with that, did, oh, yeah. that didn't make the cut? Yeah. If you're allowed so, to say. Uh, so naming is like, it's the biggest pain out of the, the entire bow launch is we come up with all these names, put them on a board, and then some people like them, some people hate them. So this year we just kind of, it was one that we've had for, for quite a while that I've had up there for three or four years now. Um, but it ended up, we looked up the definition and it was like the connection between two different things. So we were, yeah. um, kind of focusing on like the connection between the hunters and, and our engineers. And then the biggest part of our bow this year was the connect, the grip. So the, the connection mm-hmm. between you and the bow. So the word kind of just fit really well with the bow and it's cool looking, cool looking yeah. word. So, um, the X, yeah, it always makes so, it like something cool. Yeah. So that was, that was how we ended up coming with that name. And then the one that didn't make the cut that it was between was Scion, um, the S C I O N. And that, that was kind of like, so the Scion is the person that goes and dethrones the King. So Ooh. it was going to kind of be like, uh, you're going into the forest and dethroning that the King of the forest. Ooh. Okay. So, I like that. All right. Um, so yeah, so that was kind of the one that, that didn't make the cut. So, um, hopefully Matthews or Hoyt or whoever doesn't listen to this podcast and steal it. But I'm sure they don't listen to it. <laughs> <Yeah. don't>. uh, <laughs> here's, I got a name recommendation, a couple ideas for you yeah. for next year. Like I'm okay. thinking, here's the thing. You, you're in charge of naming it. Like mm-hmm. you are the marketing expert. Just tell everybody Casey. Casey. Just say this is the Casey two, the Casey four. Just name it after yourself. Like your own son. Put a K it. and a C. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they had, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> All right. All right. You got any? You got any high ideas? Um, I'm trying to think of something. I don't know. The Apollo. Holy cow. That's off. This is why you don't name Bogus <laughs> right here. <laughs> this is why it. our name is Boga. I know. For, the, you for creativity is <laughs> like, you know, like this. Yeah. Uh, I have one. So uh, that's really cool. So things are going well for you this year. You, I, yeah. Like, I know you do a lot of content production. Like, how often are you in the field hunting and, and, and getting out with guys? Mm-hmm. Um, during season, quite a bit. Um, so we have our, our prototype video that we try to do every year. So um, I'm always kind of doing one of those, following one of our guys around with the camera. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm in the woods quite a bit during season. So, I, I mean, every time we go hunting, we're with the bows or with the broadheads, so I'm always there snapping pictures, even when I'm kind of hunting for myself. So, yeah, so, your yeah, photography is very. Me. You're you're a great photographer. You're like Thanks. your account is fun to follow just for, you know, cool pictures. I yeah. like it. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's, um, fun. it's fun. Do you have uh, trips or like this year? Are you you doing a lot of whitetail hunting out on the east side of the state? Or are you going somewhere? What's your what's your plan? Um, yeah, so I got a, a decent amount of hunting for myself this year, which, um, the one, the company shoots end up kind of last minute usually. Yeah. Um, so the stuff that I have planned this year is in May. Um, my dad and I are actually going to Alaska to go bear hunting. Mm. So Brown bear, never, black bear, black bear. Yep. Wow. That'd yep. Be sweet. So kind of, it was an awesome kind of the way it happened. It was just, the one of the guy, the guys that was helping out one of the guys that we were at with a, a dealer pig hunt. Um, and he just ended up inviting me and it's kind of a place my dad's always dreamt of going to. And, oh yeah. Uh, so yeah. So we, I kind of took him up on it and I was like, I'll, I'll go, man. So, um, bought a plane ticket and we're going to head there and I'm going to actually try to do a little film, um, Ooh, a little sweet. Film on it. So yeah. So, um, that, that one I'm really looking forward to. And then I got kind of the usual, we're going to Nebraska early season, September. Um, and then we hunt a lot of Ohio. And then we'll try to get a few does here in Michigan, but sure. Yeah. Well, I, you know, turkeys here in Michigan. Oh, well you just, so. you, so no bucks in Michigan, you're just going to get does. 
Um, well, I'm going to go for a buck, but it never turns out. <laughs> I know. It's fun. I just say, I laugh when you say it because it's like, that's, that's a pretty true statement right yeah, there. It is. Yeah, no, I've, yeah, I've been chasing, chasing bucks because I hunt mostly public land. So same. it is, I don't know. That's why Dylan at long range, I don't know how those guys do it because it is so hard. Like I've got giant deer on public land on camera and I've never seen one in person. Yeah. I just can't make it happen. I know where they are, but by the time you can't they're big for a reason they're so smart. yeah by the time that time of year comes around you get them like pictures up to like september 20 mm-hmm. september 15 and then suddenly they just go into their secret range until the rut which is basically deep yep. in the swamp usually mm-hmm. uh, yep that's exactly where the, the buck that i've been chasing yeah he's like at a there's like three trees in the middle of the swamp and that's where he's at and i i got pictures of him one time coming out the first snow of the year he came out early and that was the only daylight picture I got of them all year. So yeah, wow. It's just- yeah, you hate you hate that. I have a, I have the same spot that I tried. We we actually went after this year. Both of us did. That's when we found that dead buck in the woods. Yeah, that's when we just shot and left. Well, which, technically, it was that's in an APR zone, right? Oh, was that you think that's why they let? That's why they let it go. It was uh. not big enough for that zone, mm. and it, they just. And it was yeah. archery season too, so I don't know, man. If you're gonna like, how do you you can't mess that up? Yeah, you shouldn't mess that up. No, problem is that stuff happens more than you more than you'd hope. Or you think. You, yep. you, I like to tell myself that <clears throat> that there's just not that many stupid, you know, people in the world, but you hate to see it. It's no, true. but I think honestly, I think with all the podcasts and all the YouTube videos and everyone being just a little bit more sensical, sensitive, look, sensitive. No. I don't know what you're trying to say. More in tune with good hunting ethics. Sensible. Ethos. Sensible, maybe. Yeah. Is that the word I'm going yeah. after? Yeah. Uh-huh. That that there's just kind of a, they're just phasing out maybe that generation. And the newer generation is just kind of, they yeah. just have a little bit more value than. than Whoa, maybe. you're, a bi- you're, you, you, you're throwing uh, down. Maybe. What I are you saying know. about boomers, man? <laughs> boomers will be boomers. I don't think many boomers listen to our podcast that's, and either. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's a lot of you're saying a lot of attention has been put placed on like the ethics of hunting lately, which I, so. I think makes sense, yeah. and I think it's probably true. Yeah, no, I, I can agree with that for sure. And it's probably a good thing. Like, yeah, I, I guess this is something we talked about, and I think it was just the previous episode with John. Like, yeah. because the hunting industry is under so much scrutiny, there's an opportunity to become better than what we have been yeah like too it's because we're under a spotlight we have to act better which mm-hmm. is probably just better for hunting in general anyways right. continual improvement yeah mm-hmm. heck yeah yeah it's beautiful right. man mm-hmm. nice work yeah, thank you. that's uh that's what i do on a daily basis yeah you just mo- move hearts <laughs> yeah well, that's sweet so you got a uh, alaska hunt some hunts around here um you're making a film so i'm assuming that's a bow that's a bow hunt not a rifle hunt yeah yep it's a bow hunt so nice he works yeah, at Prime. Cool. Well, he he said he's yeah. I know. I just I didn't want to assume. Yeah. It's, no, it's it's a it's a bow hunt. If I mean, if it gets down to like the last day or two, like the the guy that we're with will have a gun. Um, the boomstick really, comes out at the end. Really, boom, boom. really trying. Yeah, really don't want that to happen, but we'll see. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I uh, <clears throat> looking at planning a, a hunt, and I want to start with my the recurve, but there's a chance that I might move to the old boomstick at some point yeah. if things You're go south to. it's not on brand it's not yeah. gunga it's boga i know yeah that's why anytime you suggest turkey, using hunt. turkey hunting with a shotgun i i'm like you can do whatever you want I was just about to say but it, i'm just way. gonna make fun of you and like yeah. i'm fine with just for the record i'm fine with anybody who does it mm-hmm. i'm just gonna make fun of jared one because i need a reason to yeah. and two <laughs> because like we're literally boga Mm-hmm. Bow, ga, not yeah. shotgun ga. <laughs> gunga, <laughs> shotgun ga. Gunga sounds like a Star Wars thing. Yeah, <laughs> it would be g- Gungans. The Gungan War episode Gun- one. God, yeah. I know my movies too much. Yeah, yeah. So you um you got new bows out, new broadheads. Um, yeah. you're you're moving into uh, turkey season. You got big turkey plans. You can stay in state. Yeah, we stay in state. I think we might end up going to Nebraska to to try to knock some turkeys there. Um, every time what we species, get on, what uh, species I, do they have out there? Uh, they got Rios, so okay. that's probably what it'll end up being. Um, but they got some like 
some hybrids there and stuff like that. So who who knows? But whatever yeah. we're deer hunting there, there's always turkeys around. So we know it's a good good place yeah. to be for there. But um, never done it out of state. So no, I've yeah. never done that either. You I think it'd be a lot of fun. I actually started looking at non-res tags and you know license and yada yada yada. And it's like there's a little bit of research you got to do. There's same thing here in Michigan. There's oh, draws yeah. that you got to get into. And Michigan's yeah. not that like, even though I feel like the one we always try to get drawn for, there's just leftover tags for every year now. Like, yeah, we but always I'm try not to do that risk. <laughs> well, exactly. We we're doing the yeah. the April seventeen season one season one is that season one? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we go back and forth yeah. between yeah. one and two. What's uh hunt number one zero eight? Well, you're just giving away everything, aren't you? That's fine. It's, you know, Come big, hunt with you know us. how big that region is? Yeah. If big. you find us in the woods, mm-hmm. we'll point you the wrong way. <laughs> Birds over there, <laughs> man. Right by the morels, you know? Yep. Follow those dudes. Yeah. yeah. No, that's you funny. Guys, no, I'm ex- you guys doing a decent amount then this year, turkey hunting? Uh, we'll do – I'll do about a – so right now I am I have a home, but pretty soon I'll be homeless. Uh, we are sold our house and building, but I think – what that opens me up to is for that one week, because you get only a week here in Michigan, I'll probably mm-hmm. start with you, you know, do a kind of a weekend hunt. And if things, you know, don't, you know, connect, I if I don't connect with one the rest of the week, yeah. I'll just hunt, I'll go hunting before work and mm-hmm. uh, have a great week doing it. Yeah. It starts on a Saturday. So we'll probably go up, go up Friday night, Friday night, go put them to bed, put them to bed. Um, Cause we've got a few spots that we hunt on public that we're, we don't see a lot of turkey hunters actually where no, we go. Honestly. Have we ever seen one? I've seen one. Yeah, I've seen one with his one. his kid. Yeah, his kid. Yeah, and that was it. Um, but so we're pretty tuned in on where they roost, and we can usually get on them pretty quick. And then yeah. there's enough state land up there where we can just hop around to different spots if we don't get anything off the roost in the morning. Yeah. And I I mean I plan on going there Saturday Sunday. Yeah. Maybe even to Wednesday. Holy. I'll just I'll block that time off, and we'll just. We'll just hammer hard at them. Uh, we like to get up, call, try to get them off the, you know, when they come down. And if that doesn't work by, I don't know, 11, like I just, I'm I'm, I'm walking basically uh, the rest of the day. A bow and go? Mm-hmm. Just a bow and go, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is really fun. I'm coining that term. You know, I, I like th- that. I thought about it today. I like it. <laughs> a bow and go hunt. Cause I'll tell you this, though. After a day of turkey hunting, like when you're doing a bow and go, you're tired. Like that that night, I hit the sack hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta write down Bo and Go. Are I'm you really writing that? Yeah, he, he, he gets these notepads. The other one had like different things he was researching about hunting written down in a, mm-hmm. a little notepad. Uh, this well, was a I lunch. It was a I'll lunch order. The... Pork Boy. and brisket with beans. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. The lunch. farts. That the was right lunch. <laughs> You're welcome. No, I, I I get that. I wake up as being a creative. I wake up in the middle of the night, have a good idea just open up the phone and start going and yeah, does that happen that's right get them, man that's that, right that's how that happens that's how you're creatively inspired you in the middle of the night the wee hours sometimes sometimes i am i've got some awesome commercial commercials written down on my phone that just never end up happening but that's they all awesome. come i the love that oh yeah yeah. I just have I just wake up because I have dreams that my teeth all fall out, <laughs> <laughs> and and that's the dream that I have. What does that say about me? Yeah. I've had that dream. Yeah, I hate that I've dream. That dream. It freaks me out. I'm like the bad. Yeah, you know, th- they're all there always. Thankfully, <sighs> one day. Okay, so speaking of which, I have a, I had a deer jaw <laughs> that I had saved, and the teeth kind of started coming out, and so I had like a full molar. <laughs> so I'm outside with D. I'm like D, follow me and pretend like you're scared, right? So I come in and I'm like, you know, my wife's name is Laura. I'm like, Laura, Laura. I like show it to her. She lost it. She like freaked out. She's like, we have to call a dentist. And I'm like trying to convince her. I'm like, it's just a deer tooth. It was all black. So which kind of offended me. Like, what does she think about my teeth? That they're all like fully tartar. If we call those sugar bugs at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want any sugar bugs. You don't want sugar bugs. <laughs> That's why you got to brush your teeth. You got to brush. Do you really call them that? Dude, so if you don't brush your teeth, you get a sugar bug? hate the idea of bugs in their mouth or in their nose. So <laughs> just like if you want it like, hey, you need you need to brush your teeth. No, I don't want to. You, do you want your sugar bugs? So like you tell them that sh- that bugs that's will the crawl dentist, in their mouth. That's what the dentists tell them. That that's what sugar does to their teeth. It's like little bugs that eat away at their teeth. So I'm just that's taking funny. that and running with it. I mean, it's like, not really a we bug. Need to, <laughs> we got to brush out them sugar bugs. Wow, just, and that works. Fear, huh? Oh, dude, 
<laughs> she looks at me wide eyed and goes, "Okay." Jared rules with an iron fist, man. Mm-hmm. I was at his I'm, house the other. No, actually, it's not true. I was at your house <laughs> a couple of days, ago, a couple of weeks ago, doing a podcast. And I feel like your daughter just was doing what she was like, looking at you like, "Dad, you're not my boss." Yeah. And it was cracking me up because I was engaging her and I was maybe riling her up a little bit. Well, with company, and like she's looking at me and I'm like, "Yeah, she's being really cute too." With company around, they seem to be a little. Uh, it's pretty funny. Yeah, they know com- they know companies around. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But you love to I, see it as I'm as the, a friend, not the dad. You love to see it. I am the man <laughs> of my castle. Yeah, I could believe it. All right, I'll lay that down. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah, that's that's awesome. So you got a big big year ahead of you. Um, yeah. you know, for for people that are looking to get into prime archery, um, mm-hmm. you know. What what would be your suggestion? Uh, how, how would you suggest people find you? Uh, where could they find you know to shoot your bows? Um, what would be your message to them? Yeah, so we we have a dealer locator um, right on our website, so you can kind of go in there, type in your zip code, it'll lead you to the nearest dealer. Um, so that's kind of the best way. There is we've got a small amount of dealers, I'd say, um, but we really handpick them, and and they're really good guys and. And they're very knowledgeable, especially with Arbos. There's a lot kind of there's a lot going on. Um, so those guys are we we go through and we do uh, little FaceTime meetings with a lot of them and, and really teach them how to tune our bows and work with them. And so our dealers really do um, know quite a bit. So those guys are awesome, and we kind of like to lead them there. And then um, you get them in their shop. It's good for the industry and it's good for all that. So um, just head into your local dealer, find it on our website, and. Um, yeah, and then there's guys. There's obviously a lot of our guys are are content creators and stuff like that that are very helpful too. So if you have any questions, mm-hmm. they reach yeah. out to some of those guys, and um, a lot of those guys can ask, actually the in the field questions can really help with that kind of stuff. So absolutely, yeah. no, that's good. You know, I I'll say I uh, I shot a lot of prime before switching traditional. I had the ion. Mm-hmm. I shot that like I think it was the was yeah. it the ion that short little bow, sweet. Yeah. Um, I had a Synergy. I had a couple of them. He did. Uh, they're sweet. Yeah. Highly yeah. recommend. And yep. you shot the last couple of years, right? Yep. I've had the CT5 last year, and I just um, switched it over to the Nexus 4 this year. And like I said, I, you guys make some incredible bows. Um, Represent Michigan well. Yes, Michigan company. So we always love no, that factor. No, and, that, yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we look forward to shooting the the mega meets that's and some, following some gobblers, baby and following i'm i'm excited to see the uh if you put anything out for the bear hunt you're doing i'm mm-hmm. excited to see what how yeah. that goes yep yep i'll definitely be putting something out there's a few different storylines i can go go down but yeah cool oh awesome. well, man thanks for uh spending the time for coming out and we yeah. appreciate it no problem thanks for having me on guys yeah thanks you got it